Welcome to my review for The Wise Man's Fear. This is the second book in the King Killer Chronicles by Patrick Rothfuss. And there will be some minor spoilers, so sorry about that. Um, I read The Name of the Wind and I loved it. And as soon as I finished The Name of the Wind, I just went out and had to find this book. So I rang up everywhere and found the closest one to me where I was at work and went and grabbed it and started reading it um, straight away. Overall, I wasn't as impressed with The Wise Man's Fear as I was with The Name of the Wind. Um, so I'll, I'll tell you why, but I'll continue. Um, I was mega impressed with this. I really love The Name of the Wind. So I don't know if that built it up for me too much. And maybe I'm judging The Wise Man's Fear unfairly. Um, but... Um, Wise Man's Fear had a lot of positives. I thought the world was great. So the world building in fantasy is very important. Um, it's a believable world. It's fairly grounded. Patrick Rothfuss puts a lot of great detail in the world. Complex working society, the money system, complex nature of magic. All this was great. I thought um, the world in Wise Man's Fear was fantastic. Similar to how it was in The, the, the Name of the Wind. The cultures, the people, all their little societies and everything were fantastic. The characters were good, were pretty good. Um, without saying too many spoilers, um, Kvof encounters like new characters and new sort of cultures as he moves around, new aspects of, of the world. Um, new women, new male friends. Um, you spend more time with um, Bast and the Chronicler. In the tavern and the stories telling aspect of it the characters um, are individual they're realistic I really like them they're believable um, and um, I actually maybe like the characters in the wise man's fear better than I liked in the name of the wind because I thought some of these maybe didn't go into as much depth and weren't as distinguishable from each other but I thought they were so in this the writing as with all Patrick Rothfuss's stuff is great he puts a lot of work into a lot of time into his work. He, he's he's great at his craft of writing. It's just really nice to read. Very descriptive, very intelligent, very uh, sort of short and to the point. Um, it's not too cumbersome. Doesn't go on raving on and on like I do. Um, in these reviews, uh, very descriptive. I thought it was great. As always, there's that structure of the of it in the book as there was with um, the first one. It's a story of in a story. Kavov is in the present. Uh, in his tavern maker, tavern keep, barkeep sort of mode, telling the story to um, Bast and the Chronicler. And how it works is he actually does that over the span of a day. Over the span of a day, he's, he's, he, he tells this story. But of course, the story he's telling covers a significant portion of his life. And because of that, um, each of the, the books cover a day. And this is actually, the alternate name for this is... Um, the King Killer Chronicles Day 2. So lots of positives. Now on to the negatives. Sorry, Patrick. Um, I think there were three main negatives about it. I thought the plot line was the biggest issue with it. Both of the works in the King Killer Chronicle, King Killer Chronicle uh, are less like a normal storyline with your standard three-part plot, you know, beginning, middle, end, and resolution, and everything tied up. They're more like bio biographies. And the first one's like a biography of his life to a certain point, and then this continues on that biography, biography part two. And then it just finishes at the part of his life at what the story gets up to. So it doesn't have the normal sort of plot structure resolution that other book, books have, I think. Um, and I thought because of that, the plot sort of wandered around without and felt a, 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 not as good because it didn't have that structure. So I felt Kvof went from... It's sort of adventure to adventure and place to place, encounter to encounter, without it being a traditional story structure. I think that worked in the first book better, but in this one, I think it, it, it not having that traditional structure it sort of didn't work quite as well. And I thought it was a bit aimless and it sort of didn't seem to have direction, it just seemed to be encountering different scenarios of different people in a sort of abstract way. Um, I didn't think the pacing was as good as the first one, so it's the second thing. 
Um, things ground down. I didn't think there was as much happening at times. Other times there was lots of great stuff happening, but other times it was a bit slow. Um, I think it didn't have the, the pacing, a, a good pace um, that the first one set. I saw another reviewer and she spoke about the setup nature of the book. And she said, it's almost like Kvoff is going from place to place and he'd go to people and there'd be a setup that he had to go and learn his skill and meet these people. And then he'd go to another place and he had to go there and it was set up. So he had to count on these people and learn a new skill. And it was sort of a bit abstract. It's almost like the book is written for him to be encountering these people and picking up skills, unlike what would normally happen in a real story. Um, I mean, in the first book, he's, he becomes multi-talented. He becomes, you know, a, a pickpocket. He becomes a, a mage. He's... Uh, he's a musician, he's a linguist, and he can speak all these languages. So he picks up all these skills. And then in this book, he then picks, on, picks up even more. So he ends up, he's going to end up being this man who has so many skills and obviously going to use them to do something, I guess, at the end of the resolution story. The Kvof char character has received a bit of criticism in the past for picking up skills really easily. Um... And yeah, that, that's true, you know, he's, he's like a superhuman in the way he can pick up skills. A lot of people don't like that. A lot of people are very annoyed by the Kvof character. I found in this book it wasn't quite so much an issue. It didn't really bother me in the first book either, really. Um, but I found it was maybe less of an issue in this one. So overall, I still enjoyed it. Um, but to be honest, it was a bit of a letdown from the first one. Um, it didn't keep my attention on much, as much. The first book I gave four and a half stars, which is as most I give in my reviews, but for this one it gets um, three and a half. Now in the series he's also written three novellas. He's one, written one called um, The Low Regard of Silent Things, I think it's called, and he's written two other novella length stories, and they all feature characters from this world, so he's written a, a little bit in this world. Um, and then we're waiting for the third one to accompany these to make the trilogy, which is called The Doors of Stone. And he's been writing that for nine years. So we're still waiting for that in sort of George R. R. Martin fashion. Um, we don't, I think people, some people have even given up that it might even come out, to be honest. Um, but we hope it will, and we're very positive, and we're sending good vibes to Patrick Rothfuss to get that, that last one done, because these, you know, this is this was great and this this is pretty good. So overall, I might be judging it a bit harshly. So sorry, but um, if you've read the first one, I definitely give the sec the second one a shot just to learn about the continuing adventures of Kvof in his world. Um, and thank you. That's been my review for today.